<laughs> in other words, instead of having the, um, so have two the, the yeah, have, have, a, have, a, have two cycles instead of only one. <laughs> well, finding J and Q wasn't that bad. That was actually the easier part. Okay. Well, it sounds like you guys are really enjoying this uh, problem. So, uh, that's good. Good to know. I take that. I do take that into account when I write up my questions. Sorry, Davey. I noticed you always get e to the t or negative t, and then you're going to get t e to the t or negative t. And then that's that's not always true. Though. No. Okay. No. It actually, it's happening here because the eigenvalue is negative one. So you're not getting things like e to some power times t. So it's it's actually kind of coincidental, I guess, that that we're getting that. Um, so then we have to do y1 prime plus y1 equals c3 t e to the negative t plus c2 e to the negative t. And I need another integrating factor, which is actually e to the t again, right? Agree? So then I have y1 times e to the t prime. And I multiply on the right side by e to the t, and I get c3t plus c2. I now have to integrate both sides. So I get y1 e to the t equals 1 half c3t squared plus c2t plus c1t. This isn't that bad. So then you solve for y1. And it's just 1 half c3t squared e to the negative t plus c2t e to the negative t plus c1 e to the negative t. Pretty good. Okay, so we've now solved the simpler system. Right? Oh, oh, no. oh. oh, we're not done. Can you give us why as well? What I what I could do what I could do is I could just I could just ask you for the solution for x one, so then you don't have to do quite so much work. <coughs> I've just erased my matrix Q. Oh no, I've got it over there. Okay, so I'm going to take for the uh, x, I'm going to take Q. We're almost done with this. One negative two one. 0, 1, 0, and negative 1, 1, 0. And we're simply going to multiply that by y1, y2, and y3. Actually, there's an e to the negative t that I'm going to factor out. I need to move the bottom on this guy. That leaves me with 1 half c3t squared plus c2t plus c1. And then the y2 entry also has an e to the negative t c3t plus c2, and then the y3 was just, that was just c3e to the negative t. So for example, um, I could just ask you for one of these, or, or I could, you could just leave it like this. I mean, honestly, you're pretty much done. x1 is just this times this minus 2 times this plus 1 times that, right? And so on. So let me just write down one of them. So x1, and then I promise I'll quit. <laughs> I don't like to cop out on these things, though, because I'm, I'm setting a bad example. Like, if I don't actually finish the problem, then I can't expect other people to do that. Minus 2e to the negative t, 2, 3t plus c2, and then plus c3e to the negative t. But you can't do it, just don't put it on the desktop. Exactly. That's why I'm doing it. <laughs> so there's x1. <laughs> and then you do sim similar for x2 and x3? Yeah. Those are easier, actually. Yeah. Uh, Especially yeah. x2. Just ask us for x2 here. x2 is a nice one. x2 is just this. Yeah. I'll write that down. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh what the heck? Write down all of them. You want me to write them all down? Yeah. You wrote down two out of three. So then I got to do all three. X3 is negative e to the negative t, 1 half c3t squared, plus c2t plus c1, and then plus e to the negative t, c3t plus c2. Can you give us a two by two? Then if I give you, if I give you an initial condition, 
you guys are going to start throwing things at me. No, I, I don't think I would give you an initial, an initial position. Just teasing. Okay. Um, that took a little bit of work, but that's, that's okay. Oh, here's an item. Here's a good one. So that's the longest thing I was going to do the whole night. And I know it's already after 6. No, it's 7.20. That's 7.20? It's 7.20. Oh. That, that clock is wrong. That clock is wrong? It's 7.20. Should we quit? No. I, what do you think? I have, let me tell you how many more problems I have. I have like one, two, three quick ones. And one more that's maybe medium. Uh, yeah. Do, do three quick. I'll do three quick ones. And then you guys can tell me. And then tell us what the medium one is going to be like. Okay, here's a, here's a quick one. Uh, this is number five on the sheet, and this is true or false, and I won't ask it to you in this format tomorrow if I ask it, but for now it's fine on the review session. True or false, if the dimension of V is two, then, uh, then V contains a T invariant subspace of dimension D for each for each D equal to zero, one, and two. So if I have a Yeah, we're, we're doing this problem to review T invariant. Do you remember what a T invariant subspace is? B transforms. <coughs> Say again, Anthony? B transform uh, like a, a vector W. Which is coming from the T invariant subspace. Uh -huh. Where does it go? Uh, w. Right, stays uh -huh. inside of W. Uh, stays inside of W, right? So what we're asking here is that if V is a two-dimensional vector space, must it have a zero-dimensional T-invariant subspace, a one-dimensional T-invariant subspace, and a two-dimensional T-invariant subspace? Must it have all three of those? Maybe, and my advice on how to think about this would be to think of them one at a time. Would there be a T-invariant zero-dimensional subspace? Yes. Okay, what would it be? Right. Is the zero vector T invariant? Yes. You plug in zero, you transform it, you stay in zero? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so D equals zero, you're going to have that. Okay. Um, what about the other values of D? Um, are we assuming D values are only special values? Basically, I want to know are there three different subspaces? They have to be different because they're all different dimensions. Do I have to have a zero dimensional thing and a one dimensional thing and a two dimensional thing? Allison? Another two dimensional one. Okay, so D equals two. Right, because what is the only two dimensional subspace of V? Yeah. All of V, right? And is that T invariant? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So when you go back and review your notes about T invariants, one of the first things you're going to see are the examples where I say the zero subspace is always T invariant and all of V is always T invariant, right? Okay, so then the question is, one dimensional um, subspace, would a two dimensional, so think of it as R squared to R squared, right? That's a good example of a two dimensional vector space. Would every transformation have to have a one dimensional T invariant subspace? So basically, and which means it sends itself into itself again. By the way, if it's one dimensional, then what does that make you think of visually? It's like a line, right? It's a whole line. Yes. <laughs> so, does every transformation from R2 to R2 have a line that would have to get transformed into itself? think yes? So you're thinking that if I gave you a line, well, sorry, 
if I gave you a transformation from R2 to R2, you would be able to find me a line that when I transform each point on that line, it lands somewhere else on that line again, the same line. There are some transformations for which it would, that would be true. For example, the identity transformation. If I take the identity transformation, that's the transformation that takes points and does nothing to them, right? So then if I take any line, that's a one-dimensional subspace, under the identity transformation, that line just stays there. So of course it maps into itself again. But that's a very special transformation. That's the identity transformation. But what other kind of transformations could you have? A rotation. A rotation. Okay, so if I rotate a line, then will that line have to be mapped into itself again? If I take this line right here, and my rotation, okay, if my rotation is zero degrees, then of course that's the identity transformation. Or 360. Or even 180. Oh, but what if I rotate by some other number? Then it won't work, will it? So, so there won't be a T invariant subspace. So it's not always true. Because if I take a line that's a one-dimensional subspace, any line, it is going to move to a different line under a, trans, under a rotation of some other angle besides, so say 90 degrees. Right, a, a rotation of 90 degrees. So, so false. So the counterexample. Uh, counterexample. Hmm. Okay. So do we remember though how this transformation is written down? Can we just say the rotation in 90 degrees? You could. For the, the for this purposes, you could say let T be 90 degree rotation. Then it fails for D equals one because yeah. lines a line moves to a different line. But um, I'm just wondering if we do know. We've talked about this example quite a bit. It would be it's worth like, reviewing. Isn't it like sine? It's got sines and cosines sine in it, right? Cosine. I mean, what you, what you typically would do for that, so let's say theta degree rotation, what you, what you would want to do would be to think about um, how it moves under the standard basis. So if you started at 1, 0, and you rotated it through theta degrees, right? question would be, what is this point right here? So it's going to have some coordinates, you know, A and B, and you're going to take A and B and write them back in terms of 1, 0, and 0, 1 again to fill out the first column of this matrix. It's just a 2 by 2. So where does 1, 0 move? Well, it moves up here. Right? And you can think about, well, what is, this is a radius of 1, right? Mm -hmm. So if that's a hypotenuse of 1, then the x-coordinate of it is <coughs> the cosine of theta. So A is cosine of theta, and B is sine of theta. So what am I doing here in this column? I'm putting the coordinate vector of this point into those two positions, right? And then similarly, if I started at 0, 1, and I went theta degrees over here, it's going to be the same idea. This, this distance right here, let's see, so this is actually theta right here, and this is a 1. So this one is actually going to be a sine of theta, but it's, um, <coughs> it's with the negative, though. So negative sine of theta. <coughs> and this side is cosine of theta. You can go back and, and review in your, so, so then the actual formula for T of xy is what? Well, the first, so if you multiply this by xy, you're going to get x times cosine minus y times sine. So x cosine theta minus y sine theta, comma, and then the other entry is going to be x sine theta plus y cosine theta. So that's actually the formula. We actually derived that in the lecture notes too. Right. Uh, 
everybody knows that if I ask you questions, so if I ask you what are the eigenvalues of this transformation, what is the determinant of this transformation, is this transformation invertible or not, right? Everybody I hope knows that basically if you put down the matrix representation, you just ask the same question about the matrix representation. So for example, this matrix has a determinant of one. Cosine squared plus sine squared is one. So therefore it is invertible. It, uh, you'd have to be in terms of theta. Yeah. You, you, the eigenvalues would be in terms of theta. If I want the inverse, <laughs> so once I know it's invertible, then the inverse is just the inverse. You take the inverse of this two by two, right? By the way, everybody, that, okay, that that needs to go under your pillow as well. <laughs> you should just know this formula, right? One, this? one over AD minus BC, and then okay. D negative. So if anybody, so I said I'll be up front with my technology to find the inverse of a, of a matrix. If you come up and ask for the inverse of a two by two, I'm going to send you right back where you came from. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so got that. That, so that was one of my three quick ones. I don't know if that quick is <laughs> Not so quick. Well, the reason it's not quick is because I keep thinking of little things to add to what I said. OK, a couple more quick ones. And then I'm going to feel, you know, uh, I'm going to say the same thing to you guys that I said to my 250B students when I did their review session, which is this is not supposed to be, oh, we're all going to walk out of here ready for the test. This is we're going to walk out of here having seen a lot of different things and knowing what we need to still review, right? So I'm just trying to remind you of things that we talked about this semester. You still have to go home and figure this stuff out, right? It, that there's no way I can do all of that myself. And everybody's, what everybody needs to work on is gonna, dip, is gonna be different for each person, so. Okay, so number six in the review packet is um, define T from B to B via T of A, B, C, D equals B minus A, A, C, and A minus C. Here's what I want to do, and this is quick. Find a basis, find a basis for the T cyclic subspace of V generated by the vector 1, 1, 0, 1. trying to remember T cyclic subspaces. Does everybody remember what that means? We, were, we developed this to help us prove the Cayley Hamilton theorem. And in particular, the fact that the characteristic polynomial or a restricted subspace, T sub W, the characteristic polynomial for that divides the characteristic polynomial of the original transformation. We actually, the, the W that we used was one of these T cyclic subspaces, which turns out to be T and Mary. It's one of these W's that you can work with. <coughs> okay, so does anybody remember how to calculate what, what this is? Transform that vector many times. Many times, okay. So starting off, we transform it no times. Then if I transform it once and I'm using this formula, what do I get the first time I transform it? Zero, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, one, zero, one, one right? Okay. Then I need to transform that, right? So this is V, this is T of V. So the next one would be T squared of V. And what would that be? One, one, zero, one, zero, 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 right? Okay, and then we transform that, and what do we get this time? Don't you, wait, it should be negative one. One, zero, one. But isn't it like, don't you see the, I don't know. Hopefully the next one will be a repeat. Anthony wanted to do the 
this many times. No, but once you see repetition of the linear combinations, you stop, right? Yeah, yeah. It, you know, you know that by now, you know that by now these vectors are going to start becoming linearly dependent. After all, you're working in a vector space. By the way, v. I didn't, didn't really clarify. V is just m two of r. What's the dimension of v? Four. Yeah, question. Um, isn't it already dependent because we can do t v plus mm -hmm. t squared v plus two. Yeah, I, but here's the thing: somebody may not notice that, right? Okay. I don't want to. I don't want to get too specific on this problem. What if you're doing the problem and you don't notice that it's dependent yet? How do you know that you should be stopping? That? Well, if your vector space is four dimensional, you should not be going any further than this, because the span. Uh, by the way, the t cyclic subspace is the span of all of that. If I give you the span of four vectors, does it mean it's four dimensional? No. Definitely not, because there could be linear dependencies there. So how are you going to how are you going to flush out the dependencies if you don't see them already? Just asking, if I give you a set of vectors and I ask you, this is a very concrete set, I could ask, I could ask this in 250B. If I give you these four vectors and I say, are they linearly independent or not? Let's say you don't notice it. How do you test it? Throw them into a matrix, how, Christine? Columns. Each vector goes into a column, right? So you could put the first matrix would, in a column would look like that. And the second matrix in a column would look like that. The third one would look like that, and the fourth one would look like this. And you would just hit it with EROs, right? Pardon? Oh, there's a zero there. Okay. Right. So what you do is you row reduce this thing. I'm just pretending that you don't see the dependencies yet. So I take the negative of the first row and add it to the second row. Can you get rid of what? Oh, the fourth row is the same as the second row. Okay, so you notice these things and you can just do that. Perfect. So you basically get two pivots. What that, the pivoted columns, those are the vectors you have to keep. So you throw these two away and you end up with that. So, and these two are Li now. So this is your basis. These first two uh, vectors, because they are pivoted, corresponding to pivoted columns, they form your basis. And so you're done. Make sense? Okay. One more quickie. And then we'll see what people want to do. I can't believe my voice is holding up pretty well. Um, this is number 10 on the sheet. And this is just to give you a flavor of something I expect you to be able to do. Uh, this is also, I'm going to state it as a true false. If uh, A and B are n by n diagonalizable, square matrices, n by n, then A times B is diagonalizable. Because I have used the same Q and the same D. 
Remember that the D are the eigenvalues going down the main diagonal, and the Q is the eigenvectors, and there's no reason that A and B would have to have the same lambdas, or B. So, all right, so let me erase all that nonsense, which is what it was. <coughs> and, I'm sorry, it's, I, I just, I, I do like to show you guys things that people do that they shouldn't do. So if we wanted to, if we wanted to fix it, we would have, it would have to look more like that. So we'd have to use a different diagonal matrix, or different diagonal matrix, so I'll call it D prime, and instead of Q, we'd have to use P. But the problem with this now is that although you could multiply the equations together, if you multiply the equations together, as you'll notice, can we break this down? No, and we really want A next to B if we're talking about A times B. Okay. So you try for two minutes to prove it, and it doesn't, you can't get the proof to work, so then it's false. <laughs> I like that reason. That should be on some t-shirt somewhere. Some Tried to prove it for two minutes. Couldn't do it. Therefore, it's false. Um, because I can't do it, it's false. That's right. That's right. I can't find a counterexample for t-shirt. I could look at it that way, too. Um, so seriously, do you, do you now believe it's false, or do you believe we just haven't figured out the right reason yet? Yeah. It's very possible. I thought I showed this to you before. Oh yeah, use like one one zero one and one. Oh shoot, we did do this. Well, one one zero one is not that. Oh, one zero zero zero. Okay, uh, Derek's got something. The eigenvalues. By the way, upper triangular. The lambdas are easy to see. I have two different lambdas, so it's diagonalizable. You want to make it easy for me. Don't pick a matrix where you have to do all this hard work to figure <laughs> out what lambda is. Well, then zero, okay, go ahead. Another one. Another matrix is going to be zero. Okay. Zero, 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 one. You one. said one extra one. zero. <laughs> one. That? Yeah. Okay. You said one extra zero, then. Okay. So that's diagonalizable. All right, what's the product? Uh, zero, 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 zero. All zero? This is AB, right? Is that my counterexample? Yes, because AB is not diagonalizable. Okay, is this matrix diagonalizable? Yeah. Oh my goodness, this is the most diagonalizable matrix <laughs> on the planet. What? This is actually a diagonal matrix. Yeah. Yeah. Oh shoot! If I have a diagonal matrix then I can just choose Q equal to the identity, and I just say A equals D, and I'm done. Right? Every, okay, guys, if it's a diagonal matrix, then it's definitely diagonalizable. When you're looking at the, at the grand scheme of things with matrices, all diagonal matrices are here, and all diagonalizable matrices are in here. So diagonal matrices are within the diagonalizable matrix. So this is uh, not a good counterexample. This is confirming it works for this case. So does that mean it's true? Yes. <laughs> so we first couldn't prove it. We thought it was true. We couldn't prove it, so we switched to false. Then we thought it was false. We got a counterexample that didn't work, so now we're back to true again. So it's like I tell you that all Saturdays are sunny. When we go outside on the next Saturday and it is sunny, does that mean I was right? Of course not. Only one example doesn't give me a proof. So can we fix this? I went backwards. So I started with A, B is 1, 1, 0, 1. Okay, this is the classic non-diagonalizable matrix. And then I started with an A, and then I inversed it to find B that was. Ooh. Did you think you could yeah, you could do that. You could take. You could start with an A as long as it was invertible. <laughs> Yeah, as long as it was invertible. But honestly, there, 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 is, there is a much easier way to do this. There, there's an easier way to do this, which is, okay, instead of you working